How you doing, YouTube? Bat with Massive Bear Reviews, back with yet another review. And it's a little IPA time. A little IPA time. In the form of Dog and Shed's uh, 120. Um, I've reviewed this before, but I've reviewed an aged one. Um, I've actually, I can't remember the last time I've had this, I want to say, relatively fresh. Um, so yeah, decided to give it a whirl. So there you go. As far as what it says in the bottle, Dogfish Head, 120 minute IPA, the Imperial Indian Pale Ale, the. Um, age as well, for all you people that said IPAs can't be aged. I mean, this is an exception to the rule, but there's other exceptions. Um, what you have here is the Holy Grail for hop heads. This beer is continually hopped for a 120 minute boil, then dry hop for over a month. Enjoy now, or age for a decade or so. Um, that's pretty much it. Label wise, awesome. Super um, classic dogfish head style. Um, great from the raised glass in the bottle to the art design, everything about it. I dig it. So there you go. In this bottle, my friends, is less than a year old. And to me, that is a fresh 120. I don't remember the last time I had a 120 this fresh. So hopefully it's okay. So again. Yeah. Oh, shit the shit out of it by accident, so hopefully it doesn't blow up at me. Um, yeah, I mean, it, they're saying it's, you know, an IPA. They, you know, this is a barley wine. This is not an IPA. It's just the craziest American barley wine ever, but at the same time, it has such a crazy malt base on it that it just fucking works. Finger, just off white head, decently creamy top, compact bubbles from bottom to top, and a haziness that would make Cheech and Chong jizz in their pants. Because that, my friends, is haze. Um, orange, touch of red to it. Super unfiltered. Like, you can't see through it. It's, it's, it's light, but I put my finger, I have a huge um, studio light here, and I can kind of get the shadow on my finger through it. So, I mean, it looks like something you're like, okay, I can kind of see through it. No, you can't see through it, so, yeah. It looks like a 120. Let's see what she smells like. Huge hops. You know what I mean? It's, it's citrus. Uh, it's, it's, it's To me, it's always been equal parts. Citrus dank. Um, well, citrus pine. And tropical fruit. But it's that malt base. The amount of hops are almost like explosive to the point where you have a hard time really breaking down hop presence. It's just like hops in your face. And you have this malt base that's just over the top. Way little less of a nose than what you typically expect a 18% and change beer. I mean, I don't know what year they classify this as, ABV wise. I know it can fluctuate from year to year. Um, it's usually around 18%. The old ones flirted in the 20s for a while, but yeah. She smells like a, a, a. If you didn't know this is 120, you'd be like, okay, this is a nice double IPA. But it's more than that. So she looks like it's 120. She smells like a double IPA. Let's see what she tastes like. Cheers. It's not even fair, really. You know the booze is there. You get this warmth that actually I can taste it right down about here or feel, not taste. So you know there's an ABV involved. But at the same time, it's so drinkable. There's not really a burn in the back of your throat. It's more just warming. Like a, if you did a really old liqueur. Real, really old liquor. Like a nice old brandy. Where you drink it and you're like, it's so smooth. But you feel that warmth going down. Very similar. Huge malt presence. Um... It's really hard to pick. I've always had problems picking out flavors from 120 because they're so intense to the point where the volume is so loud, you can't make out what's going on. Like, if you ever listen to a song so loud, you can't hear it, if that makes any sense. Like, I'm not talking about, like, you turn your stereo up loud. I'm talking, like, you're in front of a 20-foot by 40-foot wall of speakers, and it's so loud that you know music is happening, but you're, it's, you're encompassed. You're just swallowed by the music. It's a very similar experience with 120. And then I get shades of, you know, stone fruit. I get shades of citrus. I get shades of pine. I get all those, but they're, they're blips in a radar because everything is so impactful and so intense, it's just really, really hard to dial in on a specific one. Same thing with the malt base. 
it's super malt driven. Um, a ton of it. It wouldn't taste this way nor age well if it didn't. But it's not like, okay, I can get this kind of malt or that kind of malt. This is what's going on. It's just so intense all around. You get like a nuttiness. You get some maltiness. A little bit of spiciness. Earthiness. You get, you know, you're, you know you're talking about citrus and pine. The whole nine, you're running the gamut. But it's just cranked past 11 in a fucking perfect way. So yeah, it's like a weird thing where I, I'm talking about it, but I'm just not going to talk about this in depth. The aged ones, you can pick a little bit more out of because it kind of settles down and flavors build and some drop off. This is this is literally, this is fucking racing on the edge at a thousand miles per hour. You're fucking hanging on for dear life and you know it could go wrong any second, but you're fucking happy you're on the fucking ride. And that's what this beer is. If you like what, will you like this? If you like Dogfish 120, you'll like this, because there's no other beer like this. So there you go. Yeah. Rating-wise, um, 96. 96 overall, it's Dogfish Head, it's 120. Why not give it a 99 or 100? One, I don't give hundreds to any beer. Two, it's going to get better with age. you to leave room for it to grow. So 99 overall, valued availability. You can get it 121 on Avro one. Not a lot of people can't say that. I'm in northeastern Pennsylvania. It's, um, Dogfish Head isn't too far away. It's not like a beer that you, you find in every single store, but if I want one, I can always get one. Um, so I'm going to give it an availability of a nine. A value, a five. They're typically in my area run between 10 to 12, 10 to 13 dollars, excuse me, a bottle. It should be eight dollars. I understand what goes into it. I understand, believe me. But, you know, the price point is a little bit askew. It's a little bit weird, and so I'll give it a five just because it's that good of a beer. So there you go, Dogfish Head 120, 2014 version. Um, to be exact, it is the September 2014 version of Dogfish Head, and this is um, July 2015. So there you go, uh, Dogfish Head 120, man, just absolutely fantastic beer. Anybody who hasn't had it, should give it a whirl. Um, especially people like, I don't like IPAs. It's not a fucking IPA. It's fucking barley wine. That's just kooky madooky. So if you're a hop head or malt fucking kooky guy, you should definitely give it a whirl. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped, Massive Beers, and all four of those places. If you want to check us out anywhere else. And uh, yeah. Another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a beautiful Dogfish 120 right now. Hope to see you next time. Cheers.